Well, welcome back. Uh, so, um, last time I said I was going to look at uh, clearing up some of the database issues that I was having with uh, that membership table, and I think I've got that all straightened away. There was, uh, there was some confusion about the fields for names of items. Um, and basically, when I was doing my lookups uh, against the, the, the data set in the uh, GameFAQs article, um, it was using the, the long full name for each item. Um, which was actually stored inconsistently in the database uh, based on whether or not uh, the item was a traditional food item or one of the oddball special case items. Um, so I guess the, the short story here is that uh, I, I guess I'll... Um, Pull up the diff a little bit here. Yeah, look at all these rows that uh, that I was missing in my in my lookup table. Um, so the deal was I had a, a name and a description field, and the way I had been storing things previously was I had name be the short name, and then description was the the full name. And uh, the reason these are different things is because um, the, the short name is what you see in the game world. Um, like if you, if you killed a, an animal, um, there's a, a little item in the world that you can pick up. Um, and so that's got the short name on it. Uh, and then when you're in the, like in the, uh, what do they call that? the uh it's like the the healing menu or whatever the place where you deal with food and and first aid and, and all of that um i guess we'll call that the inventory um they show the full name um and so there's this whole set of items in here that uh only have one name um and so I was favoring, basically the way I had it set up was the full name for these was in the name column, but the full name for everything else was in the description column. And so the refactor that I did put uh, full name always in the name column, and then I added an extra field for short name, which is nullable. So there isn't guaranteed to be a short name. And that appropriately kind of matches uh, what, uh, what we have in reality here. Uh, but while I was in there, so much text, yes, there's, uh, there's a lot of text when you're, uh, when you're writing code. Um, yeah, so, uh, right. Uh, I also extracted the, uh, the information about... Um, uh, the appearance of each item, which was in the in the GameFAQs article, uh, I didn't grab that out before, but so now that I have this extra field here, I, I wrote this in uh, for each item description. So, oh, you failed coding in school? That's a shame. So yeah, that's uh, that's the the gist of what I did earlier today. I added a new field, short name. Uh, and then I, I moved stuff around. Um, yeah. I also, uh, if you see on the, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen here, I loaded up the app, um, as an OBS, uh, browser source element. And, uh. I just wanted to see if it would work. Like, I know there was some concern about whether or not the um, the API that I was trying to use for data fetching, whether or not that would actually work in OBS or not, it appears to be. Um, but what's super weird is that I need to, um, let's see if I can move this over. 
I need to have this extra panel open um, in order to interact with it. I can't just uh, click on it in OBS, uh, like in the main viewport. Um, so if I click through here, you'll see the, uh, the actual overlay panel on the left uh, kind of updating as I go. And this is important because uh, when I'm streaming from my console, um, I'm not going to have the desktop capture uh, that I have right now. So I need, I need some kind of other, other way to overlay this stuff. And this is what OBS provides. So we need to do some style sheet work in order to make it readable. Like I need to set a background color um, because right now you can't really see the, all the text on the side because it's, uh, it's not a good amount of contrast. Um, and then we've also got like a bunch of layout things that need to happen. Like I need to cut the padding out where it doesn't belong and, and make sure that uh, things are like filling up the panel where they should be. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to happen there. Um, so, so I guess I will... Uh, I'll start by addressing some of that. Um, we'll jump into the uh, into the CSS there, um, and I'll also look at uh, the top level component, which is our app. Uh, what else do I have for customization? I guess I've got a an index.html which gives uh, an ID of root to, uh, to where the app gets rendered. So I can use that to, uh, to set, some, set some basics, I guess. Um, so let's see. Well, I'll start with the body. And I'll just set a background color to like uh, again. I like to I like to go with garish colors at first, so that I uh, I can take another pass at it later uh, once I have all the layout stuff concerns kind of taken care of. Uh, so yeah, we'll do a we'll do a light sea green just at first. Um, and what else? I also want to disable uh, text selection, I think. So I forget exactly what this is, but I think it's like user, user select. I forget what the uh, values are. None. Yeah, I guess that's right. So how is this looking over here? Not too bad. I may end up doing something with the uh, with the scroll bar. I may take that out, but I need it for right now. So so okay. Um, I want to look at. The, uh, the layout properties of root and body. I want to look for uh, padding. I don't see any. So that's good. Um, the, uh, the zone picker itself is going to have some padding that I'd like to eliminate sort of. I guess that's true. I'll pull that out and I'll add some padding to uh, to the entire page. So like um, I 
just to just to space it out a little bit. That seems okay. So what's going on with the top? We've got a margin up here. That can get eliminated. A lot of people dislike CSS. I don't know. I, uh, I kind of enjoy it. It doesn't really give me... Uh... Oh yeah, that's right. I just... Um... I was just messing with my browser settings, seeing what I could do with the uh, OBS stuff. And I think what I want is to reset all. Yeah, okay. So, so what now? Those extra items down there, that kind of represents, um, these are the, the stubs, the stand-ins for the, uh, the items that we're going to be collecting. Um, and I had talked about maybe having, uh, some kind of a tab UI up at the top of the page, um, to switch between the two lists. I think while I'm prototyping right now, I want to ensure that, uh, that the filtering is working correctly. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, kind of stack the two lists side by side. That sounds right. So I'll have the locations here and then I'll have the items uh, that we're gonna collect over here. I'm gonna turn off the, um, the overlay for right now. So I don't keep, uh, oh shit. So I don't keep uh, clobbering what I'm looking at. Someday I'm going to figure out how to turn that off in Windows so that it doesn't, you know, minimize everything when you wiggle a window too much. Because I do that a lot. That's dumb. It's kind of like in Linux uh, when I'm using GNOME and I accidentally mouse into the corner and then it, like, presents all the windows. Um, just as annoying. So... So if I want to stack these lists together, um, I guess I would go back to uh, AppJS. Real quick, I'm just going to commit those style changes. Okay, and so with this, I could, uh, I could toss um, a class name around this wrapper. We'll just call this app. The provider is around it still. I'm not that concerned about the the hierarchy there because provider is really just a decorator around this this root for our actual application um, right and so what I can do with that is I can say app uh, like display
display flex. And I think that should automatically do exactly what I want. Um, so if I kind of investigate the layout here, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got two columns side by side now. See if I can open this up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And so this is just a temporary thing that I'm uh, that I'm doing so I can ensure that the filters are being applied correctly. Um, yeah. So now we get to kind of dive into the collectibles list. Um, so I know that I need to uh, subscribe this thing to some store changes, kind of like I did on the zone list. Um, so I'm going to import connect from uh, React Redux. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I export default to the connected version of my collectible list. Um, but then I'm also going to define some functions to inject some stuff. Um, so map state to props. Um, and so what I want from this is uh, a few things, I guess. I need I need the active zone. Um, which is going to equal the ID of whatever whatever the, the current selection is on this list. I need uh, I need the data, right? So I need the collectibles. Um, and I also need the categories because I'm going to use those to group, uh, group up all the items that I'm rendering. Um, and so items isn't quite true. I guess I need, I need all of these. I need active zone which I will call a uh, number. I don't know if this is going to be... The reason I did prop types any before was because of the fact that sometimes it's null. Um, but I may be able to do number and then just not require it. Null may be able to pass through there. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll test it. Um, collectibles and really I'm just going to list out all the stuff that I injected in there uh, plainly for now um, like I said last time I could uh, I could get a lot more specific here I could uh, use a, a mutable prop types um, to express exactly what the kind of object is and um, and all of that object in JavaScript is kind of useless because technically pretty much everything is an object. Um, but we're going to go with that for right now. And so with all this data, 
I should be able to... Oh, right. I should be able to replace these, uh, these static list items with, uh, with a map. And I'm actually going to do this up here. Um, yeah. So... We'll start by not grouping them. So I take the map, which is uh, mapping the ID to each item, which allows us to do uh, quick lookups. So we can, if we have an ID for uh, for a thing, we can ask the map, hey, give me the thing for this ID. Uh, but for this, we only care about the value side. Um, and then I'm going to sort by... What am I going to sort by? I guess I'll, I'll loosely group by category, so... So I'll sort by category. And then finally, I'll take those items and uh, generate a, a list item. And so this is basically the same exact process that I went through uh, to build up the zone list last time. Um, but when we get to building our custom component for these, uh, the behavior is going to be different, right? Because we're going to be talking back to the database to, uh, to toggle the collected field on or off. Um, but for right now, for prototyping, um, I'm just going to do this basic stuff here. I use the item ID and the uh, the item name. I wonder if I can do a sort by with an array. I wonder if immutable JS knows what I'm talking about here. Like in Scala, what I would be able to uh, to sort by a tuple of values. And it would understand that um, when it's doing the comparison to basically use each successive value in the tuple to, to order the results. Um, I don't know if that's going to work here. It seems like it might. But... It's okay. This is... Uh, So there's a big list. And so, just eyeballing this. Um, so we've got coral snake, giant anaconda. Yeah, this looks... Uh, this looks to be correct. Assuming that Yes, snake is my first group. Uh, really, I would want to potentially group by category name, not category ID. But for now, yeah, this seems good. So this is just a flat list. This is uh, this is everything that we need to collect. Um, and uh, I had some styles. I 
it seemed like uh, it seemed like they would be appropriate here so We've got collectible lists. Um, and just item, I guess. So now we're applying the same kind of styles uh, to both of these lists. I could use a little padding in between these two. Um, so let's see what I can do about that. I could, uh, well, I mean, I guess I could just move that padding. That should, that should technically work. Um, it means I'm going to have double in between here, but that's, that's actually okay, I think. Especially considering I'm only going to have one list rendered at a time uh, for the actual overlay. Um, yeah. So, so okay, we've got some basics in place. Um, I'm glad that this sort appears to be working. That, that'll, that'll help, I think. Um, so what now? I guess part of the plan here is uh, to start looking at the filtering. So, so I can inject that here, right? I can, I can filter, uh, oops. Um, so I need something else. I need the uh, the membership data. Because this tells me which items are in which zones. Um, And so now, um, so I think uh, by zone ID, what I really want to do is const uh, build up a list of a list of item IDs. Uh, by zone get props active zone um, this doesn't quite work doesn't quite work. Oh, maybe it does. So 
if you uh, if you ask an immutable map for something that doesn't exist, that it doesn't have a value for, um, I think you get null. So uh, so what's going to happen is when when active zone is null because I've selected none. Um, let's see what it does here. Oh yeah, that's an empty filter. Um, so the thing of it is I only want to filter this stuff if I have a whitelist And so, since this is lazy, I can do, uh, actually, I can do uh, let here. And I can say, if whitelist is not null, items equals items filter and um, and then finally oops something like this where I refine the data set gradually. What I'd like to do here is also just uh, debug whitelist to make sure that it's uh, showing what I think it's showing for uh, property get of undefined. Oh, that's right. It's, um, I think it's items by zone. There we go. Okay, so if I look at my console log, what do we got here? Well, that's where these, uh, these anonymous requests are coming from. That's interesting. This is like a, a less than anonymous greater than. I don't know why. What is mapper? Weird. So back to console. Okay, so undefined. So this this is getting me undefined here. So I'm gonna do a little or null just to normalize it um, because I would much rather test for null or not null than have to juggle. Then have to juggle uh, truthiness. Yeah. So these are null now. And so if I if I make a selection here, I should in theory see this list reduced. Yeah. And so. This final zone here, this is where the uh, the boss battle, like the end of the game takes place. That should only have, yeah. I know for a fact that this is correct. 
It's got these three distinct snakes named for uh, characters in the in the franchise, and then a green green tree python is also there. Um, There's that that weird snake that's at the waterfall. Which area is that? This one? So... Where is it, though? I don't see it. It starts with a T. I forget what it's called. Um, this one. It's only it's only seen in two distinct zones and I would like to be sure that it's showing up in the right place. I thought the area near the waterfall was one of them. Um So where did it go? There it is. Wow, this place. Oh. Okay, so this is an edge case. Um, I think we don't have any data for this one. And so it's, it's showing me everything when really it should be showing me nothing. I guess, I guess that's okay. Um, hmm. I may, I may hard code something around this. But that's something to think about. Why that is anyway just clicking through looking for um, looking for that one-off magical snake But for the most part, this looks like this is working correctly. We just have that one zone. Which is uh, giving us a false, false positive, false negative. I don't know. So I'm going to go back to the data. Let's see. So 
So with the migrations, we've got uh, the collectibles table, which is not what I need. I need uh, collectibles data. And so I'm going to look up the... Um, So this is uh, item 43, and if I look at the membership table now, I should be able to find um, – all right, so it's only listed in one zone here. So that matches what we were seeing. Um, but I read that it also appeared somewhere else. So back to the game facts. Uh, so let's see what it says. I guess it doesn't say anything about it in this article, is the thing. Oh, I should really grab the, uh, the graphics. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I guess this is like a Japanese folklore thing. Child of Hammer. Weird. Uh, so, so what I understood is that you could um, trap it. You could trap it and collect it in that zone that's listed in our data so far. Um, But then later on in the game, it uh, it gets taken from you. There's a section where you get jailed, right? You uh, you get all your equipment stripped. Um, they take away all your gear, which means that you lose it. And I'm not sure that you get it back when you get reunited with, uh, with Eva. Um, but then you're supposed to be able to find it again by the waterfall. I guess I'll just... Uh, I'll figure it out. Somehow. We know where to set the traps, though. Yeah, apparently it's invisible when you first uh, <laughs> when you first have the opportunity to catch it, um, and you have to set a bunch of mouse traps, leave, and then come back. Okay. So. So, all right, we've got the uh, we've got the filtering happening. We've got um, this one case. So let's see. In the data, let's uh, let's look up the zone data. Um, F one. Or 1F. Top floor of the lab. That's ID 20. Now if I go back to the membership table and I look for comma space 20. Yep, it's not there at all. So... So 
so I guess what I need to do is I need to change my guard and um, here's what I'll do to address that. We're done with whitelist. We don't need it. We start with items and then uh, the next test is Next test is we'll uh, we'll see if props membership has oops we want to see if there if a key exists I think. And if it doesn't, we do something like this. So we start with an empty list. If we have a list of IDs for the given zone, then we take the whole collection and we filter it down. What else? We also need the uh, filtering by none, right? So if uh, so if the filter is null, that's a safe thing to test for. Items is just going to be. The value sec unfiltered. And then whatever we end up with, we sort it and map it. And it helps if you import the stuff that you uh, you want to use. Okay. So the test here is that as I go through the list, I should see items pretty much everywhere except for here. And then, uh, And finally, I could also do a thing where uh, items.size So if items.size is greater than zero then we do all this stuff. And if it's not, then uh,
So now let's see let's see what we got. Uh oh. That's not what we want. So how did we end up there? Size a method? No. And it feels a little weird to be uh, you know constantly overriding this uh, this variable but I wonder why this is why is this broken? Undefined, huh? So the null works, but not anything in here. So if we uh, if we debug this a little bit, let's see. So stepping over, valid IDs. Immutable JS data structures have a method that can convert them to a native, uh, native JavaScript type. Um, so this list translates into an array. And so that looks good. Um, So items.size is undefined. What is items? Oh, it's an iterable. Uh, That must be why I need to convert it into a concrete 
a concrete data type instead of um, a lazy traversal, that kind of a thing. So, okay. I get that. Um, I wonder if that has a size. I guess it does. I guess it does. I guess it's just the filter step. Interesting. So let's print that debugger breakpoint out of there. And it looks like we're in business again. Okay. Great. Well, I guess that, uh, Yeah, we get 48 when I hit none. Okay. So let's see, what can I do to clean up? white space and, and so on. Um, all right. So taking a moment to think about next steps. Um, I know that I want I want the list of items to be organized by group. So I want to know that the, uh, the Russian glow cap is a mushroom, for example. Um, so I need to get the category names in there. Um, I guess it only makes sense to show the category name if you have an item to show. It makes sense to organize the ordering of the categories by alphabetical category name order. So that's all stuff. I think, uh, and then finally, once we have all of that, uh, I need some kind of a widget inside this thing to, uh, to send a request to the server to toggle the collected field on that row and then uh, after all that I need something that will be able to aggregate the counts um, so it'll be able to tell me okay you have four or four mushrooms or two of six snakes um, and that'll be really the most useful uh, when you're looking at the whole list here.
yeah okay well so those are those are kind of the the next next pieces um just verify the work look at the diff so i've got some style changes here i uh i wrapped my application in a div with a class on it so that I could apply styling to the whole thing. Um, I dropped out some stub components and replaced them with real stuff. And uh, we subscribed the collectible lists to a bunch of store properties. Um, we implemented the filtering system for the collectible list. So we could really extract a whole bunch of that out um, into a separate function, I guess. I don't know that that really makes sense for this, but. But I feel like all these if else's all over here a little ugly i almost want to tuck some of this away into uh into something else but um part of that may be the responsibility of subcomponents so if we uh if we refactor this stuff so that um we're generating components that represent each group and then maybe later we'll look at making the groups collapsible that kind of thing do it accordion style um, and do the counts on, on that group header. It's time for me to take a break because the, because the sun, the sun's the boss of me these days. Yeah. So. We didn't have any new files, I don't think. Okay. So, uh, so we implemented the filtering by zone on collectible list and subscribe to uh, store data. Okay, not bad. And we also played around with OBS a little bit and, and figured out how to get that working, uh, which is an important step. Um, so we don't need to we don't need to rewrite any of our HTTP protocol level code. Uh, that stuff will all work. Uh, and we also have a way to interact with the overlay while it's uh, while it's running, uh, which I was a little worried about at first because it wasn't it wasn't listening to clicks at all. So I'll be interested to see if the the concept for keyboard navigation works through OBS. Um, I assume it will. I don't think there's any reason why it would toss certain events away but never know uh yeah so another hour in i guess um yeah i'll pick this up again later tonight after after i get some dinner and uh and hopefully it'll cool down a little bit um and we'll, uh, we'll start getting into some of the changes that I just mentioned there. Probably focusing on uh, dressing up the groups, doing grouping stuff. I think that's the next big thing on my list. So, all right. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.